And that's just a few of the CDs you'll be seeing in this video. There's 12 in all. And no, actually, no, no, there isn't. There's 11 in all. At the end of this video, there's a bit of a cuckoo. How can I describe it? Well, I'll give you a teaser. What do you get? What do you get if you cross analog with Britain's National Health Service? Hmm, tricky one, hey? Wait till the end of the video and you'll see for yourself. So let's get straight to it. comes from the USA and a specialist label called Chesky. This one comes from Dave Merrill and Ryland Angel called Chant Electronique. Using text from the Book of Psalms, yes the Book of Psalms, this is a monkish chant, a counter tenor vocal from the aptly named Angel, laid over a soothing bed of electronica provided by Merrill. The pair have dedicated this CD to, and I quote, all who have passed, unquote. And it's with that sort of tone that this CD flows. In effect, this is a sort of meditation on CD with a Gregorian chant plain song at its core. And its aim is to soothe and to comfort those who have been in any way affected with, well, with what's been going on in the world over the past, what, what is it now? Over a year and a half, I think. Those who are either directly or indirectly involved. Those who are worried, stressed, upset, or just discomforted in some way. The 10 pieces of music here were developed remotely, and that tends to be the way of the world at the moment with different musicians working at some distance apart. However, the music itself is very inclusive and it asks you to move into the music itself and surround yourself with that music. So what I mean by that is you are asked to basically lose yourself in the piece, to abandon your concerns and allow yourself to float away amongst the ambience. And being a product of Chesky, it's a lovely production as well. This next one is a box set. It's from the Soul Music record label and it's from Cuddly Denise Williams. And bless the lady's little cotton socks. Why do I say that? Well, who can fail but smile when they hear the funky soul from Denise Williams wafting across their hi-fi's soundstage. This is an 8 CD collection contained within a clamshell box set but it features 11 albums plus bonus tracks on those albums. The albums include This Is Nisi, Songbird, That's What Friends Are For with Johnny Mathis, When Love Comes Calling, My Melody, Nisi, I'm So Proud, Let's Hear It For The Boy, Hot On The Trail, Water Under The Bridge, As Good As It Gets, and a 15 track bonus disc featuring single versions and album tracks, promo and longer versions, 12 inch cuts and a lot more. Now this box set features lots of little nuggets, lots of little collaborations with well-known people. For example, if you're into Earth, Wind and Fire, for example, if you happen to be a completist for the band Earth, Wind and Fire, I'd recommend you get this box set because within the work of Denise Williams, she's collaborated or worked with or in some way has been connected with quite a few of the members of Earth, Wind & Fire, whether it's co-writing songs or whether the band members from Earth, Wind & Fire have played 
with her on her own tracks or whatever that might be and she's worked with other people too which have nothing to do with earth wind and fire but it's worth investigating this box set for those little nuggets there's some interesting little surprises within now this is gentle soul funky soul groovy hip swaying soul now some of this work does venture toward middle of the road schmaltz especially when johnny mathis gets involved for example let's take the classic single from denise williams the absolutely superb free in the hands of mathis and williams what you get is pop glitz finger clicking medallion wearing teeth glinting rendition of the song which actually should be buried under three tons of monster munch and left to rot now that's not a criticism of denise williams and oddly enough it's not a criticism of johnny mathis because i've heard some good stuff from mathis i wonder whether they were approached by some suit who said hey i've got a great million seller idea for you guys and then the damage occurred when left to her own devices denise williams oozes quality and soothing melodicism as such williams always raises the bar look at Steve Howe and his solo series of homebrew albums we're up to goodness gracious we're up to homebrew seven Howe has had a storming career and I've been fortunate to be able to track most of it on vinyl and CD while I've yet to fully grasp his early work with the R&B outfit the Syndicats I enjoyed his stint with the UK psych band Tomorrow formerly known as the in crowd then bodast a surprisingly good band and i recommend a listen and then his 1970 entry into the band yes then later asia then abwh which was offshoots of yes and also gtr what i like about steve howe as a guitarist is his touch he knows how to weave a narrative he's not all about power and bombast he's not about strength he's all about delicacy he knows how and when to pull back he can infuse a guitar with a certain amount of fragility he doesn't need testosterone and strut to affect his audience he uses his brain and on that basis i think steve howe is one of the most intelligent guitarists in the world today he also stands out and this is a trick not that many people guitarists drummers bass players vocalists not that many people can pull off you put steve howe this is a non-singing steve howe you put steve howe in any band and as soon as he plays his guitar you know it's steve howe he really stands out there's mostly acoustic and electric instrumental solos here plus the odd vocal but sons dylan and virgil howe on drums with phil spalding on bass guitar appear occasionally too these songs emerge from the 70s all the way through to 2016 now while many of the songs in this collection have the notes on a scrapbook feel to them there's much to admire here this single disc is a great resource for fans now mastering does vary on this collection because well it's a collection it's a compilation of individual tracks it's not one piece of work it's not to be looked at as a whole it's well i mentioned scrapbook earlier on it really is that it's a number of little moments throughout time throughout many decades in fact there's a touch of upper mid compression here in the mastering but nothing too aggressive overall the mastering gives a full rich presentation now 
we're looking at a new band called On Our Own Clock, and that happens to be the name of the album as well. It comes in a rather, well, I'm not even sure you call this a digipack. It has a very sort of thin... Can you see that? How about that? Can you see that? It has a very sort of thin cover. It's not the usual digipack look. And inside here is very nice artwork. I'll put this on screen in a second. You can get a nice close-up high-res view. And it looks rather interesting. But what about the music itself? On the Mushroom Hour, Half Hour and Total Refreshment Center labels, extraordinarily wordy label names there. This album has been created, as I've mentioned before, remotely, and it combines artists from South Africa in a jazz frame of mind and Senegalese instrumental music with smatterings of London infused spice. There's a total of 14 artists on this one, all listed with photos, titles and country of origin on the rear of this nicely produced CD cover. The music itself, well, it's one of those, it's one of those albums which defy genre pigeonholing, really. It's a bit of a mishmash of this and that. So you hear that Senegalese guitar instrumentation, you hear brass, listen out for that tuba. There's some nice piano work here, electric bass, chora, there's a sax, lots of synthesizers, and some MC rapping from Grandmaster Cap. The music blends tones from dark cultural corners. There's jazz, there's beats, there's electronica, and they're all thrown together with a gay abandon. It's like, it's like 14 people walk into a room and pick up any instruments they can find and they say to each other, yeah, yeah, that'll do. Let's make an album. Just like that. That's how it feels. It feels immediate. And I loved it. It feels fresh. It oozes positivity. It has air and space around the soundstage and it's full of newly minted energies. These are people, well the whole thing feels new. There's no essence of the stale about this album. It feels as though there are, well, everybody's almost doing this for the first time. It feels, it just has that fresh feeling about it. And because of that, when you listen to this album, you feel infused with energy yourself. And that's a big compliment for any album indeed. Now we have a spot of jazz from the edition label and I'm going to mutilate this poor gentleman's name. Daniel Herskadel. I hope I've got that right. I probably haven't and I apologise again if not. This album is called Harbour, as in Harbour by the Sea, and Herskadel plays both bass trumpet and tuba. And that's the second time I've mentioned tuba in this video. Are tubas in? This is a 10 tracker and our Daniel is accompanied by Helga Norbakken on drums and marimba. And, and again, I apologise for ruining this gentleman's name. Yolf Dale on Piano and Celeste. And Harbour? Well, yes, absolutely. Track one, the Mariner's Cross, has a driving beat with a sense of space. It sounds like the beginning of a long journey, a time when possibilities are endless and exciting. The track Ice Free has a sense, largely due to its complex percussion, of machines hard at work, either at sea or in that hard wiring titular harbour. There's a sense of clanking metal here, the creation of a story through engineering. Either that or we're actually breaking through ice flows, of course. The track The Lighthouse on the Horizon continues the musical imagery. The music is that light from the lighthouse and it just seems to be played at a distance. The music combines a warning, as lighthouses tend to do, but it also reminds the people on the ship of home, of stability. So you have that contrast in this music. In fact, 
you could write a book listening to this CD and interpreting all of the aspects and the emotions you hear within it. It's a sort of tonal work of literature. Pink, purple, yellow and red. This is a box set from the early 60s band The Sorrows. Well, I say early 60s, they had a relatively long-ish life, kinda. It's on the grapefruit label. All the way from Coventry in the UK emerged the first incarnation of the 60s band. Guitarist Philip Pip Witcher, rhythm guitarist Terry Jukes, bassist Philip Packham and lead singer Don Farden plus Bruce Finley on drums. Like many contemporaries the band learned their trade by touring Germany and then they did some early recordings with the legendary cult producer Joe Meek. So Joe Meek fans will already I'm sure recognize this band. They then signed with the Pi imprint Piccadilly. In 1965 the Sorrows released a single and undertook TV appearances toting a sort of beat, garage pop, psych, R&B, freak beat thing. There was a lot going on in this music. It wasn't until their third single called Take a Heart that they hit some success. An album of the same name hit the stores in 1965, but I'm afraid that album bounced right back to them. It wasn't a success. Two more singles were then released, and when the big success didn't occur, the band members started to leave, and after that there was a sort of rotation going on in terms of who was in the actual group. Then they surprisingly hit it big in Italy. They went on tour, they recorded songs for a movie, issued an Italian-only single, and eventually signed with an Italian label. Ultimately, the fractious nature of the band's career and the turnover of band members, some were homesick and departed because of that, wore down the remaining group, culminating in the band actually splitting up in early 1970. Now, this is an excellent clamshell box set featuring four CDs. It includes mid-60s singles, the entire Take A Heart album in both mono and stereo, the Old Songs, New Songs LP, and an earlier acetate-only demo album that was scrapped when two members of the band left. There's collaborations with Ennio Morricone, the title to the new Italian spy movie Ipteron, an acetate-only early 1968 single, spin-off singles by The Eggy and Renegade, a 1980 live show from the Reform Band, and four previously unissued 1964 recordings with Joe Meek. Phew! There's an awful lot packed into this box set. It's a superb production, highly recommended. He's a sort of lost UK rock talent. One of those guys who's been everywhere and yet not that many people even knew he existed. Called Kiss Me Quick, Squeeze Me Slow, The Collection, it's from the UK-based repertoire label and it features three CDs and also a DVD. This is a man who wrote hundreds of songs. He had a great rocking voice and was described by more than one of his contemporaries as a sort of British Chuck Berry. His first band was the rocking outfit The Black Diamonds in the early 60s, then The Orioles and then The Rockefellers. Lots of songs here from the likes of Jerry Lee Lewis and Carl Perkins were sung with some gusto. Then the band Legend appeared. Legend in 1969 released a single produced by Robin Trower from Procol Harum and an album 
produced by Tony Visconti. Although seen as early prog rock, they were more Credence Clearwater Revival, really. The album was later plundered by pub rock bands in the 70s. And speaking of the 70s, in 1978, Mickey Jupp's Legend, as they were now called, a compilation, was released by the punk label Stiff. More than that, Mickey Jupp's solo LP, Juppanese, featured Nick Lowe, members of the band Rockpile, with guitars from Chris Spedding, and it was produced by Procol Horror man Gary Brooker. Later Jupp albums were produced by The Sutherland Brothers, X-10CC Men, Godly and Cream, and even status quo man Francis Rossi. Then Jupp went over to Nashville and played over there. He even worked with Ry Cuda for a bit. And yet, fame never really bothered him. But there was a number of reasons for that, I think. Partly, Jupp never really played the fame game. He was his own man. He also enjoyed his own space and he insisted on doing what he wanted to do. Others said that he could be an angry man and difficult to work with, that he had his own demons, as if something had happened to him in the past and he couldn't outrun it. Fans of Jupp includes Dr. Feelgood's Wilco Johnson, who took part in the documentary on Jupp in the mid-90s. Unfortunately, that documentary is here in this box set on the DVD I mentioned earlier. Jupp is a talent you really have to seek out. His is an old-fashioned rock and roll sound. It's pub rock. It's blues rock. Classic rock. It's good time rock. The work here is rollicking, full of energy. It plugs into the heart of the genre. There's no messing around here. This rock gets straight to your hip bone. This jewel case in a card sleeve features that DVD disc and three CDs of music, 70 tracks in all, covering the man's career with lots of bonus rarities thrown in for good measure. we have a box set from the rock band Asia from BMG. This box set is called the Reunion Albums 2007 to 2012. You could call this band a supergroup, although the term was a little outmoded when this band got together. Nevertheless, when Asia hit the road in the 80s, it did so occupied by four legendary musical talents. So you had John Wetton from King Crimson on lead vocal and bass, Steve Howe from Yes on guitars, Carl Palmer from Emerson, Lake and Palmer on drums, and Jeff Down from The Buggles, no less, and Yes on keyboards. These bedraggled, aged and moth-eaten legends, deities in tight trousers, wrinkled yet splendid icons, staggered after a bit of a cough, together again for 2006 and 2007 as part of the group's 25th anniversary with a world tour. A live document over two CDs called Fantasia Live in Tokyo, issued in 2007, was proof that they actually did it and didn't pretend to do it while sipping pina coladas on the Miami beach. That album includes work from the band's first two albums, Asia from 82, and Alpha from 83, plus Heat of the Moment and Don't Cry. Studio albums followed, one called Phoenix from 2008, Omega from 2010, together with Triple X from 2012. Suddenly, the 25th anniversary, the reason they got back together in the first place, transformed itself into a 30th anniversary as time passed. And all of that is included in this box set, five CDs in all. The box set cover was a previously unused piece by Mr. Roger Dean, and the Fantasia sleeve design has been updated 
by the man himself. The music here is big, bold and gloriously glossy. Asia fans will have a ball with Palmer's tight, impactful percussion and Wetton's strong and forceful lead vocal. How and Downs provide a full and perfectly overblown filler for that sandwich. It's like MTV never left us. In my head, every single track I hear on this box set is accompanied by its own video. As for mastering, well, that does add some compression to the mids, tightening the detail and adding a bit of an edge to the treble. The effects are not wholly destructive or aggressive, but they are noticeable. jazz release for you from the Sleepy Night label. This one is by a jazz legend, Don Ellis, and the album itself called The Lost Tapes Volume 3. And yes, there are two others to track down. Now, Don Ellis was a talented trumpet player who led a host of big bands from ooh, 1965 to 1975. He also took part in a variety of quartets and trios and played with many of the greats, including Maynard Ferguson, Charles Mingus and Ray McKinley. His interests were broad and ranged from improv to classical. He loved to experiment with time signatures, playing around with sound while using three bassists and three drummers in his orchestras. And he loved humour witness his cheeky false endings in some of his work. He also experimented with technology, attaching things like ring modulators, amongst other gadgets, to his trumpet. For fans, he's worth spending time getting to know. Now, these lost collections have been sourced from Ellis's own archive, but also from friends and family. And they include works from his earlier days all the way through to his later work, a span of around sort of 13 years or so. As you might expect, the sound quality varies widely from the decent bootleg level to a quality akin to live soundboard recording standards. This is a fascinating collection that completes a worthy suite of rarities that any fan should check out. this is the first of two apologies I have to make, principally because I've taken so darn long to get round to reviewing them. So here's the first apology. It's from a band. No, it's not. It's an individual. It's a chap named One Eye to See. Now, this instrumental electronica album relates to an author. It's a sort of celebration of the works of the author, Michael Slade. One Eye to See is a bit of a fan, and each track name is the name of one of Slade's books. The books themselves are sort of police procedurals about a fictional special external section, or special X, of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and they're full of, well, deranged murderers, I suppose you'd say. So you can imagine the sort of tone from this album. The music itself has been heavily influenced by the German krautrock band Tangerine Dream. The music itself is dense, it's complex, and as I've mentioned relating to the books themselves, the music is also pretty dark. But it also always retains a sense of melody. It blends static charged bass beats with cinematic drama and sparkling elements of fragility. In fact, there's more musical layers here than you'd find in your typical Black Forest Gatto. And then you get a sort of nostalgic track such as 
cutthroat that celebrates the work of craft work. There's that basic electronic instrumentation, there's the looped beats, and the building forever building. The entire album Special X does this. It's architectural in form. This is an album that, to misquote Kraftwerk, is full of adding but never subtracting. It's almost celebratory in its darkness, uplifting in its seriousness, and it adds a bass thump that will shake the windows. One Eye to See has also created a series of videos for each of these tracks, and I'll post the playlist for those videos. It's a YouTube playlist. I'll post those in the description. Nearly finished, two more to go, and we're looking at the esoteric label now, and we have the wonderfully named Scruffy Duffy by Duffy. There was a time when the name Duffy did not mean a blonde soul singer from the depths of Wales. It meant an early 70s rock band. This is a five-piece from Guildford. They made it big in Switzerland. They once played on a TV show which died a death because of a massive power shutdown in Portugal. They were once surrounded by tear gas toting police in a restaurant in Germany. Then there was the time they were driving to Munich in Germany when they were stopped by a policeman with a machine gun who said they were no longer in Germany. They were in fact in Poland behind the Iron Curtain. That was Duffy. Duffy were Stuart Reffold, vocals and X Switch, Joe Nansen on keyboards, Barry Coote on guitar, and both Mr. X Lucifer Band, Patrick Sargent, and Will Wright on the drums. No one can remember why the name Duffy was chosen, but they went with it anyway. Switzerland was where their first album, just in case you're interested, was created, but it wasn't a success, especially financially, despite the Swiss loving them to bits. Before the second LP, which we're looking at here, Scruffy Duffy, they were signed by a label called Chapter One. This was hardly a rock roster. Other big rockers included Lena Zavaroni. Anyone remember Lena Zavaroni? And the other one was Jackie Palo, who was a wrestler. That was Duffy. No one remembers why the second album was called Scruffy Duffy either, but they went with that too. None of the band members even knows why the actual band name was not on the cover of the album. All of the band's fans thought they changed their name to Scruffy Duffy. Lead singer Refold actually said, and I quote, I haven't a clue why our name isn't there. That's Duffy. As for the music itself, well, it perfectly reflects the 70s rock idiom. There's a bit of free in there, plus a host of others. I don't know, a sprinkling of Argent, maybe? In all, it's a perfect 70s rock noise. It's a great little album. I've got to say, it's a great little album. As for the mastering itself, well, it's very nice indeed low noise. It's also perfectly balanced, it has a rich 70s tone, and it has a wide, broad soundstage. Ah, Duffy. What's not to love? So here we are at the end of this video, and I did promise you a surprise. It's a blood bag. I kid you not. It's a National Health Service blood bag. And inside it is blood? Not quite. Well, it's blood red, but it's a cassette tape. And this is it. Let me bring it to camera. It's this. As you can see, it's the real thing. It's an actual NHS blood bag, and inside 
is, well, it's a cassette. Blood red-ish, well, maybe a tone or two higher on the Pantone scale. And this little piece of paper, that's a lyric sheet, would you believe? All folded up nicely and included within. Let me show you a few high-res images and you can, at your leisure, take a bit of a gander. Now, before I begin, this is my second apology because of the horrible delay with me getting around to this one. The band behind this is the real Tuesday Weld and the cassette in the blood bag is called Tape Dust Memories. Tape Dust Memories is part of a sort of multimedia collection called Blood that's described by the band as, and I quote, a set of songs for noir movies, 10 tales of romantic revenge, heartbreak, dreams, and urban psychodrama, unquote. Also called Cabaret Noir, it includes a range of collaborators such as Ariana Curls and Gigi McEwen. Now, as I say, this is a multimedia project, which basically consists of a vinyl release and this tape in a blood bag. Both formats feature completely different songs. So the songs on the tape are completely different from the songs on the vinyl. So what sort of music are we talking about here? Well, I think you're looking really at late night 1930s Parisian smoky nightclub type of music. So it's heartfelt vocals, a lamenting violin. There's a tear-stained piano with dazed percussion backing it. All of that pour out sadness and loss. Alternatively, it's also the Cotton Club of the 20s, full of energy and whimsy and living life in the moment and to hell with tomorrow, which of course triggers a sadness all of its own, complete with lilting clarinets and breathy lyrics. And as I say, half of that project is wrapped up in a medical blood bag with a fold away paper lyric sheet. And the vinyl I mentioned adds another 10 songs to the collection as a whole. Now, part of the apology I gave to the band, I also give to you because buying these items, well, it's a bit of a moose point. I'm not sure you can still buy them. I'm not sure if they're all sold out. So my sincere apologies to all of you for the late arrival. But I really just wanted to let you know these things are out there. These things exist. You can still grab the music as a digital download. I know that for certain. But whether you can find the items themselves, that's another matter. I will put links below. You can have a little look for yourself. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. Could I ask you to click on the like and also subscribe buttons below just to help to keep this channel ticking over in the eyes of YouTube. Also, don't forget to check out the links below. It will list the record labels mentioned in this video. I'll also add my social media links. There's a link to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. Also my website, and there's a host of material on there you will find on this channel. Same with my Patreon page. There is exclusive material in terms of text-based features and also videos, which again, you will find on this channel and all kinds of other stuff down there in the description. I will be back and I'll be back next week with a new video. So hopefully you can join me then. It'd be great to have your company, of course. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.